Hello everyone, Jose Rodriguez here once again. Listen, one of my most favorite things to do is to read through all of the different posts that pop up on a daily basis in some of the printing forums. I love reading about success stories. I love reading about problems. I love helping people with printing problems. And I marvel sometimes at the mistakes that people commit. And it's really innocently, a lot of them. And some of them know, should know better, but most of them are due to innocent reasons. Now, a, this is really, really interesting. And I think it was an Epson R2880, an older printer, but an excellent, excellent printer. In that particular line of printers, the RXXXX printers, the R2880 surpasses anything. If you can get one in good condition, snap it up. It's a great printer, let me tell you. Anyway, so here's the thing. He decided he was going to load it up with his continuous ink system. Why? Most people who do this do it for the convenience, okay? They don't want to have to refill refillable carts and deal with the constant changing of carts and so on. Although you could do my practice of whole sets exchanging. If you have two sets of refillables, do what I do. It reduces the amount of dealing with, re, you know, rechanging, changing constantly carts, one set at a time. You can print a whole month without having to change a cart. Anyway, that's not the subject. So he's getting good results. And all of a sudden, he starts getting slight changes in color, color reproduction. And let me tell you, the SIS unit, basically, for all of you guys may not know, it sits outside. It's a series of tanks. Basically, it's a, a unit of um, however many bottles matching the number of colors that the printer utilizes. And as the levels drop, you just literally physically add ink to those containers. It is fed via some uh, tubings to your printhead or cartridges that fit on top of the printhead assembly. In this particular case, it just rides on the printhead uh, carriage. Now, what happens if you do not use a printer, especially one that has ink lines? And you have third-party ink, which of course, if you use a sys, you're going to probably use third-party inks. You let it sit for a while, you're going to have a bit of uh, pigment settling. When pigment tends to settle and it's not in complete 100% suspension, then the color density of that particular color will change. It will actually increase. And so he was getting gradual changes in color balance. So he would then contact the company because they provide free profiling. And they would send them the chart. He would print it out. And he would send them via mail those charts. They would then scan and produce a profile for him. And everything would be back to normal. He would be printing wonderful prints again. A few weeks down the road, as soon as a couple of weeks down the road, things started to shift again. Slowly, but no noticeably. So he would contact them yet again. Another profile would be created. And things would be back to normal again. At the fear of sounding repetitious, two weeks down the road, the same thing again. Color starts to shift. He contacts them again. Okay, that's enough of that. So he's done this probably six times. And I'm going like, dude, don't you wonder what the heck is going on? You should not have to do that. If you were running, say, OEM inks, you would not have that problem. If you were running OEM inks, even on refillable carts, you would not have that problem. There would be no shift. Now, one possibility is that the individual colors he's buying as he needs them, because he's only buying one bottle at a time, may be slightly different. That's a possibility. But more than likely, what I think is happening is that he's getting some pigment settlement in his dampers. See, these systems use little tiny dampers. They're not cartridges per se. They're just little containers with little open lids. You just lift them up. This particular type is that way. I won't say who makes it. 
and so you just add your initially you add ink to that and then you raise your cis unit high until you basically purge out all the air out of the uh, dampers and then you close the little lids and there's a possibility that if you do not print enough you could have some ink settling or pigment settling in those ink lines and eventually it'll just kind of pour right into your damper and you'll have a higher concentration of pigment where the ink eventually comes out and goes through the print head and onto your paper so he is getting some gradual changes they're not overnight they're gradual changes of color reproduction or output so he is compensating that for that by having new profiles made every time he notices a visual change and eventually you get to the point where now you have shifted things so far that profiling will no longer compensate for that and the only way to do that is to just rip out that continuous ink system take that cis right out install some good third-party cartridges loaded with good third-party ink or Go back to OEM, my friend. That's all there is to it. And I guarantee you, it will go back to normal. I guarantee it. That is caused by what I told them, ink settling or pigment settling. And it's such a gradual thing. It just sneaks up on you. Next thing you know, things are just not looking the way they used to look. That's why it's a very, very good idea to always print an initial master print and put it away sealed in a box and every year or so or every six months or so take it out and compare it to a currently printed master print and you can use one of the standard images and then you can make a visual comparison to notice if there have been some shifting in your output all right and that will that will tell you hey something's going on and maybe the system that you installed the inks that you are using are not operating properly. And so you can always go back to your standard, which is OEM, and then try to produce a second print and then compare it to the one that was you know, off. And if it's now perfect, then you know that it was caused by either the system you're using or the inks that you were using. And that's it. It was really, really amazing. And then the guy still reluctant to let go. He says, I'm just going to continue that way until I run out. What are you doing? Do you realize that you're possibly forcing higher viscosity ink through those nozzles? And then you're going to clog them literally with pigment particles, which do not dissolve. They do not dissolve like dye does. If you clog a dye printer, you just put some Windex on it. You dissolve right through it. But not so with pigment, my friend. You will clog it up to the point where it's like it's like dropping gravel through your drain. It'll start getting caught, and then eventually you block up the line. And that's what happens with pigment particles, especially third-party ones that are not micro-encapsulated like Epsons. All right. So that's it. I just I really enjoyed dealing with this today, and uh, I hope that he um, at least takes it with a grain of salt. It wasn't just me telling him this it was a number of other people suggesting that he just start over again but he's just too stubborn so anyway that's it if you see changes gradual changes and you're using other than maybe either OEM or refillables with good inks it may be your carts are not operating properly maybe that your ink source is changing but I think in this case it was just pigment settling and it's just happening far too gradual for it to be more like of an abrupt change so and people when if you're starting out and you don't have the experience please read some of these forums go to these forums and you'll have other people i'm not going to say i'm an expert but other people will advise you and give you good suggestions of what to do when all of these unsuspecting problems arise and they will arise they will i have gone through millions of them all right so thank you once again for watching Please share, please subscribe, and please like. And until the next time, everyone, happy printing. Bye-bye.